Hi, I'm Laku. Welcome to my channel and my new Crow Castle mini series of videos. Because this will be the first video of a playlist I'm gonna create, which is gonna contain different kind of builds for different kind of situation for new players, for low low wave level players. And this account is on wave 2000 at the moment. And the, the levels, the hero levels, the castle levels, the archer levels, these are pretty much what I think you should have when you are at this wave level. Now if you've been watching every ad during the game and keeping the game on during nights to get more gold and so on so on, you could have possibly even a lot higher level units, higher level castle and so on, which is completely fine, that's always a good thing. Or if you've been using a lot of worthless class coin or you've been skipping the ads and so on, you could have a little lower level units as well. Which can be fine, you are not in a trouble yet. But if you keep if you aim to approximately these levels, you will be completely fine and have no trouble getting forward in the game. So the first video we're gonna do, the first build is gonna be manual wave build, gold wave build, because that's the most basic thing in Crow Castle really. When you wave you want to maximize the gold income and you need the gold to upgrade everyone, so that's just obvious you wanna gain as much gold as possible. Now, now the gold gain treasures are pretty much the same as in the beginner's gold guide video I've made earlier. I'm gonna link it in the description, so I'm not gonna go through each and every one of them, you can check them there, so we're gonna save some time. But in addition to that video, we are using the golden tree, which wasn't out during the time I made the video. And we have the gold, gold castle, which boosts the offensive hero's gold gain in the specific level, depending where you put it in your in your layout. So you want to put it so it affects the heroes that deals the most damage in the game. Now this is uh, something that's not gonna be a really huge gold boost. So if you feel you need to sacrifice some gold boost item for damage, this is the one. I would suggest you to start with. But when you place it in the top, for example, it's gonna affect the heroes on this level. So it's gonna affect Alice and Zeus. And Alice is gonna be most likely the strongest, most damage dealing unit. So I'm hoping he she gets the most bonus out of that golden castle. But all else, treasures and so on, they are like in the beginner's gold guide, so check that out. But yeah, I have level 550 castle and 1000 up archers. Now you want to basically keep them somewhat like the archers should be like twice the level of your castle or so. Then you're gonna be fine. And for your hero levels, you want to keep them approximately that your highest heroes are two or three time, times... I mean, that your castle level is two or three times the level of your highest level heroes. Now. I have the highest level heroes are 200 here. Let's scroll these through. I will add the levels in the description as well if you wanna check them quickly during the video there. But I will scroll them through so you can see. So 220, that's actually the highest level, but approximately 200, that's the highest level hero I have in this build. So so your castle should be like 400 to 600. 500, 550, that's completely fine. This is completely okay level. And for towers, the only tower I've really leveled is the Thunder Tower. The rest are really, really weak. They are not gonna be that much of use. So if you wanna spend Golden Tower, use the Thunder Tower. That's gonna be your number one. That's the only really strong tower in the entire game at the moment. And actually you wanna put this to attack the flying monsters because lightning deals more damage to flying monsters. So on towers, focus on the Thunder Tower and keep keep it approximately at the same level as your heroes and you should be fine. For the leader, I have Thor here to boost, because Thor boosts the chains, every chain hitting hero and tower by plus two chain. Thor is great hero in the beginning, that's why I'm using him here. Uh, you, can, you could use another hero if you wish. Solar we have some fire damage heroes here and you could use Zero which has the 10% additional damage passive to slowed monsters and that's completely fine. You're gonna be fine with it. But I've actually not used Thor in my main main account so I'm using him now. 
he's pretty great. So he's gonna boost the chains of your Thunder Tower, and he's gonna boost the chains of your Lightning Castle. And for castle parts, you wanna really focus on the minigun and the lightning castle. These are the two strong castles that's gonna get you very far in the game. If you're not using Thor, pump the minigun most, like most, and keep lightning castle a little behind. This is fine actually. If you if you prefer Thor, really, you could use you could switch the levels. So your lightning should be 900 and minigun maybe 700. But these levels are just completely fine. And for the top row, you wanna have the Archer Trio. You wanna have them in this in this order because they give a passive attack speed boost to each other to, to the other archer units that are standing beside them. So you wanna put the Dark Elf between the other two. So he she will get the most attack speed passive bonus from both of the other archers. That's gonna mean faster MP and HP recovery for you, so you don't, you're not gonna struggle with MP that easy during the wave or during any fight. And you wanna have the Dark Hunter promotion to boost your town archer's attack speed. This, is, this hero is really weak on his own, but this skill is amazing, it's gonna boost your town archers, which are one of the main damage leaders in your builds. So you wanna have in him in basically every normal build. And Dark Ranger, this guy is really good at killing bosses and killing the Tauren, the charging boss, mini boss. So that's why I have set her to attack near. So when the Tauren charges, this guy will focus her attacks on the Tauren as specific. For the second row, we have we have all the witches in this build. The witch trio is really strong in the beginning. It's stronger than the other summon units. So I, I would really highly recommend in the beginning you go with the witches and all three of them and no other summoned units. Completely fine with just the three witches. We have Alice here, who is the strongest of them. You should have her in fire promotion. And yeah, she's the highest level because she's the strongest one. She's one of the main heroes you want to focus on leveling. And between here we have Pure Wizard who has a passive skill which reduces redux the cooldown of heroes standing on either side of him. That's gonna mean Alice's cooldown is gonna go down by one second and it also affects the passive summon skill because witches have passive and active summon skills. So that's gonna mean faster active summons and faster passive summons, so a lot more skeletons. And on this side we have Zeus. I prefer Zeus now because using the slow promotion, the right path, it doesn't cost any MP, so you're not gonna struggle with mana so easy during the waves, and it's gonna give you some slowing effect if you set him to attack the air monsters, so when the flying monsters come, it's gonna slow them down a bit, so you will have more time to deal with those. In the beginning, it's not really that important, but as you progress farther in the game, you're gonna like the slow. And the same reason he's on this row because his skill will be one second faster because he's standing right next to the pure wizard. And on this this row, we have the other two witches. We have Dorothy and Lisa. They are a bit lower level than Alice, and you should keep them approximately at this ratio. So Lisa should be the lowest level because she's the weakest one, because she's a me melee unit. And Dorothy is a semi-good, she's pretty strong actually, so you wanna keep her at pretty high level as well. And you wanna use Dorothy for the fire promotion as well, for extra damage boost. Alice and Dorothy fire Lisa poison. And we have Stoss here to recover MP and HP during the battle if that's necessary. The HP should only be needed in some boss fights and preferably not ever. But you, you may want the MP recover here if you're, if you're struggling, struggling with MP. Which means you should upgrade your castle. If you're not strongly struggling with MP at all, you can take another attacking hero here. 
And on the final row we have Dark Ice Wizard, who is set to near as well. And this, the left promotion, the Wizard promotion. His normal attack freezes, so when you set him to attack near, he's gonna freeze the tower when, when it charges through to your castle. So when the tower comes near, Dark Ice Wizard will automatically freeze him and Dark Ranger will focus her attack on it, so it's gonna just destroy that little bastard. You're welcome. And the, the ice freeze effect is great if you need some crowd control during the battle. And you don't need to level this guy at all. 30, 31 level, that's completely enough for, for the wizard. Same goes for the hunter actually. 31 levels, no need to level him further because they are only there for their skills, for their effects. They are not damage dealers. Save your gold! And then we have the Dark Necromancer, which is obvious for almost every build. This guy helps greatly dealing with the mobs, with the monster defense reduction. Trust me, you want this guy. You wanna, you wanna use him when you see a large horde of enemies coming and they're gonna get just destroyed in front of your eyes. Yeah. But let's do a one manual battle. So I'm casting all the, all the witches, I'm just freezing the mobs if that's needed and using the necromancer when a horde of enemies come. And now you see the Torren, it got frozen it, and it died really fast, I don't know if you even saw that. But that's because of the Ice Wizard and Dark Ranger here. Now this, as you can see, this is really easy. These guys are really, really high level compared to the wave. So this is just this is just destroying. This is <laughs> this is this is almost too easy. You can say that, but it's never too easy. Don't don't think like that. Don't think you should do the upgrade if you're not having any problems. And I'm not actually struggling with MP right now, so I wouldn't need stos necessarily in this build. There we go. And if you wish to use this build for auto battle, if you have. The paid auto battle time from the daily event, or if you have purchased some auto battle time, you can use this exactly same build, except you wanna switch the iron wheel here, which boots colony called cooldown. You wanna take the worthless class coin here, because when you use the time mode, it gives you plus 15% bonus gold. Uh, let's through, let's go through one auto battle as well with the same build. Let's see if the auto battle. The AI of auto battle is always spamming the skill, so it might run out of MP even with these levels, but it should be pretty pretty fine. But that's something in in most of your auto battle builds you're most likely gonna have want to have stos for that MP recovery because the, the AI is just a spammer. There's no planning at all. When you manual battle you can plan the skills and time it right. And if you are having trouble with the MP, stop stop summoning Lisa, because she's the weakest, as I said. Just let her auto summon, that's gonna save you some MP. And if you need to stop summoning someone else, stop Dor Dorothy as well. I forgot to show the results, but let's look at the results of, of the auto battle. So here we go. The Town Archers are the strongest one. And Lightning Castle is second, actually. And Alice is the third. So, as you can see, these are the your main, your main damage dealer. Alice is the, your main damage dealer hero in your wave build at this level. And the others are here. They are not that great. So you see Lisa here, not very strong. Zeus not very strong either. But as I said, free unit. You can switch him out if you don't need him. And there we go. So this is the gold build, manual gold build, which can be used for paid auto battle as well. And if you have any questions about the build, about the levels, or about the... I don't know, anything regarding this build or this game in general, feel free, feel free to comment. I might have forgot to say something important. I will try to add, add the, the extra information in the description if possible, but... I can still forget something, so do do not hesitate to ask if you 
if you feel something wasn't explained. But this is for this video. I'm gonna say thank you for watching the first video of this this playlist, this series, and next time we are gonna have an AFK wave build, which is gonna be great. See you in that video, thank you, and remember to like. Bye bye.